Yo, this inflation is no joke. I want to read uh, so I don't miss. Listen. Uh, so this inflation is very serious for the, our, our industry, all industries. This is insane. This spring, and I put out a video about this too, I did the math and I raised the prices 12.5% for existing landscaping clients and then 20% for all new customers, right? To compensate for the inflation. And I was like, we're going to be fine. You just raised the prices, dog. Well, this new price increased res resulted in us losing about, uh, and I just posted this on my Instagram at Keith Kelfus. This resulted in us losing about 10% of our existing clientele and lowered our close rate for new clients from 50% because we have about a 52% close rate of qualified leads. I'll explain that in a second. 50% all the way down to a 10% close rate of in-person quotes, qualified leads. What I mean by that is we took 300 new phone calls, qualified 30 of those, right? So that means that <laughs> literally 90 out of 100 phone calls, we conversate with them over the phone and we have a script. And if the customer is not a good fit, we figure that out over the phone before driving to their property. And so we do like 10 quotes out of every 100 phone calls, right? And then from those, we would close about half of those, 50%. Well, this brought the close rate all the way down to 10%, which means we did, out of 300 phone calls, 30 in-person quotes, and only closed three new jobs. Could you imagine taking 300 phone calls and only closing three jobs? You'd be like, that's insane, Kofi. I closed 90%. Well, next thing. These three jobs were priced properly to afford to run a legitimate, licensed, and insured tax-paying landscaping business that pays the employees and the owner a living wage. Like, I've done all this. I sat down with Dan Plata from Blue Skies Bookkeeping, my bookkeeper. He's a finance genius. And we, we did all the math of, like, what do I need to charge? We're still learning more about this to dial in the man-hour rate. And I'm like, I've got a lot of work to do in my landscape business, but I'm getting a lot better at really looking at... Uh, the numbers and the scope of the numbers but what i'm seeing is that this ebbs and flows for uh for a famine or what's like a feast or famine in your business there's different we call it a there's different different season uh low balling season right that's why a stand genetic i'm not trying to go too far off the rails here i just want to give you some context Stan Genetic, the dirt monkey, he says something awesome. He's never of a shortage for work or having to lower his prices ever because the fall before, the year before, he's out selling high ticket, I don't know if you do lawn care landscaping, but he sells these high ticket landscaping jobs the year before. That way when the spring rolls in, he just rolls right into doing the jobs he's already had contracted the year before. He's not doing any playing that game. Um, although we have a couple of those, not at the level that Stan does, and, but um, so this, what this happened was, I priced all of it properly. So when you in in a real world, is different than you writing stuff down on paper and doing financial planning and projections, saying, okay, well I'm just going to charge the customers exactly what we need to charge, so we can do this and this and this and this, and we're going to have company parties. It's going to be amazing. It's like this isn't Apple. This isn't freaking you know like apple computers where they have just insanely wicked high profit margins this is a landscaping business so all right so we ended up we we almost ended up with no work right the guys my guys that work for me that i, I care about very much they didn't even know that we for like about a week and a half straight we were working job to job like I was literally closing within an hour. We, we never ever went without work once. I would not let that happen. I would try everything. But I was riding the line of keeping the prices as high as possible um, within all accordance to the inflation and making sure everything is dialed in. I'm not trying to like price gouge or anything like that. I've never tried to do that. I'm trying to run a profitable business and a profitable business is allows you enough money so you can have an abundant business. Right? So with that being said, I rode that line and I took it all the way to the point where I just had to just ditch and go to plan B. And I, ha I was, well, right here. And I was pressured into immediately dropping the prices back down in order to fill up our cal calendar with new work. 
we are now booked out for a month so we're booked out for a month and we're back up to a 30 percent close rate with more new landscaping jobs coming in every day and the phone's ringing and we're, we're doing fine but this tells me that america is not ready for this extreme inflation this is me saying all this right now i'm just saying what i was typing and i posted a funny meme kind of a parody of all these people posting them at the gas pump and people are spending 150 200 dollars to fill up their trucks right now i just filled up my f-150 it's a, a v8 5.0 150 dollars exactly the gas pump stopped at 150 i was like that's funny 150 to fill up a 150 it's not funny um now i'm not trying to feel like i'm entitled here because i've been paying attention to this stuff since 2008 now, I remember in 2004 the gas prices went up to 450 a gallon for about a month, but I'm surprised they're not 12 bucks a gallon right now. If you compare the world average of what the prices are for gas and all this stuff, but everything is going up so much that I think if you have contracts out there, your contract should have con contingencies and like clauses in there saying that hey, this is only good for 30 days. Last year I was hearing there was contracts in the construction world saying this is literally only good for like two weeks because the inflation is insane right now. And so uh, I'm feeling it in my business. Uh, I'm making sure that we have work, that my guys are paid. I've lowered my own salary to make sure that there's money uh, money in the hopper to pay for everything that we need, for materials, for get. I mean, I just have a small landscaping business. That's what I want, is a lean, mean, uh, dialed-in landscaping business. And forget trying to do anything else until you're, that's, that's what I talk about. Sorry, I got a lot of shit going on, is making the business lean and mean. Um, my brain's going off right now because I've, we got to get this job done. We got a heat advisory tomorrow. We got to get this other and a lot of shit going on. So, all right. So, I want to know what's going on in your business. How you're feeling the inflation? What are you thinking about with the gas prices? Did you have to? Did you raise your prices to compensate for inflation? And then were you forced to lower them back down because the customers just weren't having it? Like I, you can say whatever you want to say. That's it. I'm gonna charge it 150 dollars a man hour. I forgot your name. You're in the comments in my last video saying, "Oh yeah." It was funny. You're like, well, I charge $200 a man hour and we have a $10,000 minimum and we all pull up in friggin' Range Rovers and cut your grass. It's like, um, you can say whatever you want to say, but the reality is there's only so much that the market can bear. Your market, right? You're, you're probably a family owned business and you care. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean is like, you shop at the same grocery store as your customers do, probably, or unless you're going to a different neighborhood. But these are all hardworking, probably middle and upper middle class people. I don't know who can afford landscaping. is basically a luxury service. I think of it in those terms to keep yourself out of a scarcity mindset when you're quoting. These people are spending disposable income. But what happens is, is we're definitely... I don't like to ever talk about this stuff because I'm not qualified too much, but do it looks like we're going into a recession for, sh for sure. Uh, I'm in my late 30s, and so I've been through 2008, 9, 10, and I know what that was like. I don't know how old you guys, um, I think you're probably between the ages of what, 24 and 35 years old at the most, probably between 20 and 40 watching this video right now, let me know. But if you've been through 2008 and 9, let me know what it was like for those of you that are too young watching this right now. Um, it's no joke. I'm telling you it's here's what it's like you you have to work twice the amount if you want to make the same amount of money you got to work twice the amount or you're gonna you're gonna make half the amount of money and everything goes through the roof so you basically got to work twice the amount for half the money no joke i'm saying you will literally have to be work 80 hours a week for peanuts it'll become uh, you gotta say feast or famine it'll become famine mode and you will take whatever work that you can get I don't care if you're on your hands and knees pulling weeds or cutting lawns for peanuts. You literally go down to like like the corn on the cob. There's no corn left and you're trying to get that and you're fighting for it. It's a totally different type of atmosphere where uh, 
you know, if you're if you're if you're financially rich and you're loaded and you then you can invest like crazy and build a business, grow real estate, you can afford. But there's lots of people, if you pay attention and you listen to audiobooks and self-development programs and entrepreneurs that have been through this, there are entrepreneurs back then who said, No, we'll press through and they kept trying to expand their business and keep all their employees on payroll if they had a bigger business and they kept going because they thought, oh, you know, because you're an entrepreneur, you want to muscle through it. And a lot of people lost their shirts. They lost everything people had to just just liquidate just to barely break even there's people who went bankrupt there's a lot of crazy stuff so uh i'm not saying i'm an expert in this go find all the information but i mean it's it's like tighten your belt and work your ass off and it's back to cash is king type shit cryptos crashed for freaking uh, the stock markets crashed the S, crashed the s p 500 i started a sep ira with the vanguard star fund and i've got a bunch of different little stocks and stuff like i don't even know what i'm doing i've listened and learned a bunch but real stock market experts and analysts are doing it like 60 hours a week i just keep you know a little bit of amazon a little bit of tesla a little bit of ethereum and crypto and cardano and polka dot and all this different stuff doesn't mean i know what i'm doing it just means that i've got I've watched my stocks and crypto go <laughs> and so, but I don't care. I'm not emotionally attached to it because you shouldn't invest what you can't afford to lose and you just play the long game. Somebody that I know very close had a house upside down in two, 2008 and they were stressed out and all they had to do was wait for the market to correct and come back and they ended up, all that stress was for nothing because they were able to wait it out. I know people, some of your landscaping and lawn care customers might live in these, you know, half a million or million dollar homes and you're like how in the hell did you afford to get this house i've talked to people they're like oh dude we bought this house back in the last recession for like 200 grand it was foreclosed sitting around with cobwebs and we got in cheap and now and the price went back up now i live in a three quarter million dollar home and i'm just a middle class person it was like so a lot of things are a facade and an illusion it's like the raising tide raises all boats but a sinking tide can sink you as well my uncle who's been in business about 35 years uh had a couple auto care centers. He's got one auto care center now. He said something um, interesting to me. I don't know if this is good advice or not, but he said, stay small in business, stay small, stay around. <laughs> so you think about that. Um, uh, I'm going to stop right here, but yeah. So I raised my prices like crazy and was, was pressured into lowering my prices back down. And so we're talking about being hyper efficient now. Uh, working your ass off, probably not making any, I, I don't know what type of money you have, but I was getting excited. I'm like, dude, I want to go, I want to buy an RV and travel around. I want to buy my first boat. You know, when you work your ass off in your business for many years, you get to the point where you start, your soul is starving and you want to feel what it is like to maybe buy a jet ski or a boat or start doing things like that. And I'm thinking about twice. I haven't made any of those crazy purchases. I'm, I'm happy I didn't. And, uh, I just want to see what happens here. But, uh, luckily if you got your health, you got wealth and we've also started a survival garden we got a garden we got our first harvest today we got a bunch of lettuce which is pretty exciting uh, i don't really talk about this on my channel much but uh, are you into uh, gold and silver and things like that you can get down the prepper path and go into a deep rabbit hole please don't say anything crazy in my comments because i don't want the algorithm to do that but uh i think it's positive uh smart to stay positive and keep your head up don't go down any dark paths or rabbit holes but also do what you feel you need to do to uh, be smart and be alert and be prepared but nonetheless i see a beautiful world and i see tons of opportunity and look at all the people who have become just more and more and more and more and more successful so i just went down a rabbit hole i gotta jump out and make sure this landscape job is going well let me know if the if you think we're going to a recession and if this inflation is affecting your business at all or are you just crushing it dog you're making five times the amount of money because you got the magic you got a golden cape you got a cape with the golden and you just show up and the customers just give you all the money because i see a business that <laughs> the only way to make money in the landscape sometimes you get those jackpot jobs and we get these these um uh abundant customers that just have tons of disposable income and are happy like sure let's do it let's do it let's do it and they'll just spend you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars and just want to do whatever of course we 
uh, we charge everything is proper and legit. I, I, I'm kind of disclaiming right now, putting out these disclosures because in my past videos, some some of my videos have gone viral on Facebook and got like literally millions of views, and like mainstream Ameri America people which is good but they're pouring into the comments watching my videos they don't really know where i'm coming from or what i talk about on my channel which is i'm talking to other contractors but they're like this guy's a scam artist he's trying he's trying to tell people to raise their prices and so you can make it make good money off your landscaping customers scam artist he needs to stay poor what is this guy this guy's crazy why is he cussing like i'm just just i'm not saying anything bad or wrong i'm just just talking about the hustle man just you know but uh not for this video <laughs>